Hello everyone, welcome to our new lecture. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the basic concept related to Python. So even if you are a beginner, you will be able to understand all the concepts because uh, I have covered almost everything from beginner level to advanced level concepts. Also, I'm going to explain everything one by one. So don't, also no need to worry about that. Make sure to open this collab notebook on your computer. Open a separate notebook, a fresh one so that you can start practicing as I try to explain all the concepts. Okay, so let's get started without uh, wasting any time and uh, let's see what we have here. Okay, so before we do that, let's make sure that we have a few sh keyboard shortcuts. Okay, uh, just try to remember these keyboard shortcuts and practice as you code because these keyboard shortcuts will help you, you know, do things quickly. You can say so if you want to execute any code shell, all you have to do is click control plus shift if you want to create a new one you can just uh, you know create um, click escape plus a or escape plus b if you want to delete any any code shell all you have to do is click control plus m plus t if you are on mac you can follow the command button okay so now let's see how we can perform basic calculations in python okay so python is a very beginner friendly language it's a lot easier easier as compared to other languages so all you have to do is like understand the basic things and you will be able to like you know start programming you don't need to understand every some complex concepts okay so let's see how we can perform basic you know arithmetic operations so like uh, addition subtraction multiplication division etc so if you want to do some addition in python of two numbers let's say all you have to do is add the two numbers this here if you want to do the subtraction you simply have to do the subtraction in the same manner if you want to do multiplication for the multiplication all you have to do is multiply multiply the two numbers using this symbol star symbol okay and if you want to do division you simply have to use this particular particular symbol this this symbol here and uh, it will give you the result in float point float point means it is somewhat in a different like you can say a uh, decimal format okay now there is another thing called floor division so floor division actually give you non-fractional part of the particular division so division takes place but it won't give you the fractional part so let's say you are dividing something uh, let's say 19 by 3 okay it will if you are doing floor division it will give you only the non-fractional part 6 point something will be the answer but the point part is ignored here okay if you want to find out the remainder of the division all you have to do is use this particular symbol this percentile type symbol okay that way you will get the remainder now let's see how we can calculate power if you want to calculate power all you have to do is simply use double star and uh, you will get the output so let's see here we have five double star three that means this this means five raised to power three okay so the output here is 125 so that way you will be able to calculate the power cool now there are certain inbuilt functions in python that will help you calculate these things faster so there is a inbuilt inbuilt function for power that is p o w if you want to calculate power for 5 raised to 3 all you have to do is enter the number here and the number that is raised to that particular number so let's say 5 raised to 3 then in the function p o w this number will go here and this number will go here okay so the output will result in 125 so these things are basically called arguments that we'll talk about when we cover function but just understand that uh, this is how you can create you know you can calculate power of any particular number in the same manner if you want to calculate square root for square root you simply have to raise the power in the fractional format so let me explain you the concept of square root what happens is when we have square root of let's say 4 this can also be written in the format of this this simply becomes our power problem so what we can do is we can simply calculate the power for this power of this particular number 
okay in the same way if you want to calculate cube root of let's say 8 so this will be 8 raised to 1 by 3 in the same manner you can write 8 into 1 by 3 so the output will be 2 okay here so just understand that if you want to like calculate square root cube root or any root you simply have to use some you know like this this type of uh, technique like you know some tricks you can say just to you know like find out the particular power now if you want to find out the magnitude so there is an absolute inbuilt function abs and uh, if you are using uh, this particular function this will give you the magnitude of particular number irrespective of the irrespective of the sign of that on that particular number so let's say here we have minus 45 the output will be 45 only okay if you want to like convert any number to int or float you simply if you want to like output it in that that format so it will output it uh, if you're just writing it int that number or float that number it will result in that particular output okay so this is not important but still like you should know also let's say um, you want to work with complex number so the complex number has a complex part and a and an imaginary part so python has this function that will output the complex number if you are using this inbuilt function called complex okay so if you're using this function all you have to do is enter the complex part and on the right hand side you have to enter the imaginary part if you if you are like running this shell it will output this particular you know result so it is 5 plus 4 4 j so that is the complex complex number you can say now there is a conjugate of the complex number conjugate means if you are multiplying that complex number with its conjugate it will result in some real number so that means conjugate is just the opposite of this sign so here 5 plus 4 the conjugate will be 5 minus 4 so if you are doing it in this manner what you will get is you will get the output in this format now you also have like d mode function inbuilt function which will give you the pair of the flow division and the remainder as output so you don't need to like you know worry about these inbuilt functions you can also explore on your own what are the inbuilt functions and you can like you know calculate uh, like read read more about these things now let's see what are the variables but before you do that just make sure to read about the float double and decimal there is certain you know a few differences when it comes to float double and decimals because you know the difference lies in the precision float is not that precise but the decimal is that precise so just try to read this article i have mentioned the link here visit this link read the article and understand the difference between float double and decimal so let's say if you were working on some research or some scientific in some scientific you know fields there you will be working with some decimals maybe because the precision there there you need to work with the precision etc but here just we are working with the float so so just uh, like visit this uh, article and read about it because um, like you know you will get the concepts there okay so in python we use variable names if you were dealing with some number or particular object you don't want to use the same object you know at thousand places instead what you, what you can do you can simply give a name to that particular object and you can use the name at every place like wherever you want to use that particular object you can simply use the name name and this name is called variable so let's say you want to use 20 at some place in your code so what you can do is instead of writing 20 at every place all you have to do is simply define 20 assign this value of 22 a variable called a and that you can use it uh, use it at every place okay in the same manner uh, what you can do is if you want to let's say assign um, a value of 30 to some variable b you can simply use this equal sign and that way you'll be able to assign the value of object 30 to the variable b so this is how you can create a variable in python so instead of this int number you can have any other you know any other type any other object types okay so this is how you can create variable and uh, there are certain guidelines but before we do that let's look uh, at this particular you know feature of the python so here 
I have the value of a equal to 20, value of b equal to 30. But here what I have done, I have assigned the value of a to b. That means the value of a was 20. Now I have assigned the value of a to value of to the b. Now initially the value of b was 30. But what I have done here is I have assigned the value of a to b. So what will happen? The value of b will be now 20. And the value of b that was 30 previously will be gone, will be lost from the memory because Python wants to maintain the efficiency. For the efficiency purpose, what Python is going to do, Python is going to discard the value, previous value of the b and it is going to like treat the new value as the value of the b. So that is 20. So this particular thing is called garbage collection in Python. Okay. It means just to, you know, like uh, you can use your memory for some useful purpose. That's why Python does this. Cool. Also, since these variables are, you can say, uh, simply the numbers or the objects. So you can also perform the operation on those variables. Okay. So whatever operations are applicable, you can perform those operations. Cool. Also, if you want to check the IDs of these two variables, so let's say B equal to A which was equal to 20. If you want to check the IDs of these variables, you will see that the IDs of the A and B are same. That means these two, these two variables are pointing to the same object 20. That's why uh, like I have like we are getting the same value here. That means we are not creating two different values. We are simply pointing to the same particular object. So you can see Python is not creating any different object. If you want to learn more about the ID of a variable, you can simply Google it and learn more about it, but it is not important. Okay. Now let's see what are some naming guidelines for creating a variables. Names cannot start with a number, but numbers can be used in between. So don't try to use a number before the name. You can use it in between. You cannot use spaces. Instead of spaces, try to use this underscore instead. Don't use any symbols like multi, uh, like star symbol or remainder uh, or any any symbols. Okay. Keep your names in lowercase or maintain a consistency. So like there are certain other formats, but try to you know maintain a consistency throughout the course, so, uh, your code, so that even if you are coming back to your code after one year, you will be able to understand what uh, what you have written there. Okay. So consistency should be there. Also try to avoid using you know characters such as I O L. These are single characters. So do not you know define single character variable names. And there are certain reserved keywords in Python as well. So Python has some reserved keywords. Try to avoid those re reserved keywords like list, for, string, true, false, etc. So like these are some you know certain reserved keyword that Python uses to create its own you know like libraries etc uh, so try to avoid those things also if you want to read more about these things simply visit this article further read and you will be able to understand now let's see what are the reassignment operators so let's say you want to update the value let's say here we have defined a equal to 10 and you want to update the value of 10 to 12 so what you can do is you can simply add 2 to a but in python what you can also do is you can um, write a plus equal to 2 so this will what it will do is this simply means a equal to 10 plus 2 okay so this simply means like you are adding plus 2 to the previous value of a okay in the same manner if you are doing this particular operation a star equal to 2 that means you are multiplying the value of a to 2 that means the output will be 24 because we are here we have updated the value of a to 12 so here it will treat it as 12 into 2 that means the value will be 24 okay in the same manner you can perform division you can perform you can perform division you can perform uh, subtraction as well okay now there is an inbuilt function in python that is type if you want to check the data type for particular object of anything you can simply enter the data type in the type function and you can check the type of that particular data so let's say this data type is integer this data type is float this data type is text that means a string then the output will be string okay if you want to check the data type of this false or true this will output boolean 
so here you can see we have um, like uh, check the uh, you know, data type of these particular variables so the data type of c is int the data type of d is float the data type of e is string the type of f is boolean so that means using the type function what you can do is you can check the data type type of any object in python so even if you are creating your own object you can take the you can check the data type of this particular object so until now we have only looked at the numerical data types now let's see how python treats textual data okay so let's say you want to work with texts so how you are going to do that so there is a concept of strings strings are python objects which is all about the texts okay so you can store textual information using strings so let's say you want to create a string a string means a textual information okay so to create a string all you have to do is you have to use these double quotes and uh, enter the textual information there the output will be this cat so let's say here we have like created the textual information as cat okay you can also create a sentence so let's say if you are uh, using i am a cat so the output will be in this format okay now notice here we have used double quote in the first one and then single quote here so you can use double quote or single quote that doesn't matter but the only thing is you don't need to have a conflict when it comes to single and double quote so let me show you an example of the code where the conflict starts okay so see here what happens is when we are having this i am a cat okay here what's happening is we have a single quote here and here that means the string creation is like stopped here rest of the things will create error okay to avoid that all you have to do is maintain like a consistency with the double quotes you can use double quotes outside and then single quote inside after that this conflict won't appear okay so here we have used double quote then there is single quote if you want to use that formatting so uh, that that way you won't be able to like you know create any error also you can use the concept of skip sequence that we studied in the markdown tutorial in our previous video so if you're using this skip sequence it will avoid any error so that way also you can create the same output okay also if you want to add a new line in python if you are using just simply you know like uh, if you are simply like uh, clicking the enter and writing the new line it, it will produce an error okay so to avoid that simply you have to use this skip sequence here and that way you won't be getting any any error okay now python also has an inbuilt function called length okay to len len to check the length of any object so if you want to check the length of a string you simply have to enter this function and this will give you the length okay one more thing like python treat you know strings as sequence so let's say if i am writing cat python will remember the sequence of this cat so let's say it will remember the position of c it will remember the position of a it will remember the position of t that means it knows where these things are okay so you can say in python these things are located at certain indexes so the cat will have the index of zero the a will have index of a and t will have index of two it, the indexing does not start at one two or three this is not the right approach in python indexing starts at zero so whenever you are working with any string so make sure that indexing starts at zero the counting starts at zero that means the index of c will be zero index of a will be one index of t will be two okay also let's say if you are using a sentence with some white space so let's say there is a gap so this one gap will also have a index so this i will have index of zero gap will have index of one a will have index of two m will have index of three that means there is also an index of the gap so make sure to remember these things because uh, next uh, in the next section we are going to work with the indexing and slicing of the strings okay so try to you know 
consider these things if you are confused about the indexing just make sure to like you know go through uh, like write down a sentence and try to see how you can like you know create create their indexes and all the indexing starts at zero so make sure to follow that particular you know rule now let's see how we can do indexing and slicing okay so in python let's say we created a variable name s which is nothing but a string string name python so s equal to python okay now if you check what s is equal to s equal to it will be python okay now to check the indexing of a particular value so let's say if you want to check what is at the index 0 simply you have to use these square brackets and the index here the position here okay since indexing starts at 0 0 that means at 0 location the value will be the first letter python p okay so the output here is p if you check the what is at the first index the value will be p if you want to check at the last index all you have to do is minus 1 why minus 1 let me tell you so see here let's say we have the word python this is our first index 0 1 2 3 4 5 when you are saying minus 1 index minus 1 python when you are saying minus 1 that means python will go backward okay so from here 0 it goes backward and this position is treated as treated treated as minus 1 and this position is 2 minus 2 minus 3 in that manner okay so just understand this concept okay because uh, you will be getting certain problems related to this particular string like reverse this string etc so that manner uh, you need to understand this concept the minus indexing and the positive ones okay now let's see what is slicing so slicing you can say is like you know if you want to um, get the value of value from one index to another index so let's say um, if we have python here and you want the value from y to n okay except p so what you can do is you can simply write it in this manner 1 to n so that means it will cover all from 1 to all okay and this will include 1 as well okay so that means the output will be from y to n but if you are doing doing it in this manner if you're writing it in this manner what it will happen it will let's say if you are covering till 4 here okay so what will happen the output will not include the fourth position so whenever this number is on the right side that number won't be included that index won't be included so the only uh, output will be until the index of 3 so 0 1 2 3 only index will be until 3 so here let's say we have uh, s bracket double colon 4 the output is th the fourth index is not included here okay in the same manner if you want to get everything except the last one okay you simply have to use this minus one okay the last one won't be included cool now there is a concept of stride in python stride or steps so let's say um we have python here this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 the stride is step size so when you are saying when you are when you are saying s double colon 1 that means you are taking one step at a time that means you are jumping from p to y y to t t to h h to o 
and O to N. By the way, um, I forgot to mention that uh, you can also, you know, take a range. So let's say you want just indexing from one to five. So this this is also like this is the range. So this will give you um, the slicing from one position to fourth position, excluding fifth. One position will be included, but fifth position won't be included. Okay, so that's why here we have double columns. So if you're adding step size as one, this will jump from one to one uh, one location. If you're typing the step size P to be two, it will jump from P to T, T to O. Then it will jump from O to P. Okay, so that way we have the step size of two. Here we have the step size of one. In the same manner, you have step size of three, step size of like you know it will jump further you can say to the p okay so here we we have a step size of three so in the same manner you can say like uh, um, you can also calculate it will take some time to you know develop it in your intuition but uh, with practice you will definitely understand what exactly it is just try to like you know like uh, find out the indexing on your own try to do slicing on your own and um, see what are the outputs you are getting in that manner you will be able to understand how exactly it works okay also we have a trick to let's say reverse the string of any number so let's say any any string sorry so let's say you want to reverse the string so we have the text python if you want to reverse it you simply have to use this particular trick this particular trick okay this will give you the output as this p y t h o n now let's see what are the properties of strings so first thing strings are immutable so let's say you want to change the letters at certain index so let's say you want to change the letter at index 0 by assigning it some other letter you won't be able to do that because you know strings are not immutable sorry strings are not mutable so that can't be changed once once it is created that means the once the string is created it becomes immutable okay also what you can do is instead of like you know immutable immutability uh, immutability uh, you can simply concatenate the strings so let's say you want to add something after this string you can simply add it using the plus sign and your string so if you want to add python is amazing then uh, you can simply use your string s plus is amazing you can describe your your you know sentence also if you want to create a repetition you simply have to use this star symbol so let's say p equal to s if you want to write down um, print s 20 times you simply have to uh, use this star symbol p into 20 it will produce s 20 times okay now see every object every you know data types in python has certain methods and the string also has certain methods and uh, here are a few methods that i have mentioned here these these will be useful when you are working with certain you know like textual data or certain problems you will be able to use these methods so here what we have let's say we have defined a variable variable name circle a string okay if you want to uh, like make all the letters of this particular string capital you simply have to use the upper method if you want to lower all the letters of this particular you know like uh, string you simply have to use uh, c dot lower and make sure to use these two bracket two two bracket brackets okay, this will convert all the letters of this particular string into lowercase also if you want to capitalize the first letter of that uh, particular string you simply have to use capitalize and uh, i'm also again like you know putting this emphasis on these particular brackets because most of the time beginners don't include these brackets and there and it results in some you know like you won't be getting the output exact output okay you'll be getting some different message or maybe error so let's say you want to swap case so let's say we have a string in different cases um, like here we have p in capital like uh, uppercase sorry and uh, rest all letters are in lowercase here the s is in uh, uppercase 
and i is in lower case a is in upper case rest all are in lower case if you want to swap their like you know cases simply you have to use d dot swap case and this will result in this particular output in the same manner if you want to convert it in uh, the title format title format means the, all the first letter of a word is capital so if you all you have to do is use this word title uh, sorry this function title and this will convert the string into this particular format okay if you want to just see um yeah there is a difference between title and capitalize capitalize only you know converts the first letter of that particular string to uppercase so here only the python is convert converting to uppercase is or amazing is not converting so that is the difference between um, title and capitalize okay now there is another method called split split is a very important like you know important because you will face many questions related to this particular function so make sure to rem remember this particular function if you're splitting if you're using any this function it will result in this particular you know output so it will what it will do it will split all the words of that particular um, string you can also use any you know particular text in between that particular string to generate the output let's say you want to split from am so what it will do it will simply cut the am and you will uh, the output will be this okay also if you want to count the number of overlapping overlapping so let's say how many times something is used okay um, so let's say if there is any some any word that is repeated more than once so you can simply use this d count also you can use range from 0 to 16 how many times i is repeated in any function so you can also count that okay now there is ends with and um, ends with functions um, like uh, ends with will give you whether this particular string is ending with that particular letter or not so that way you can simply find out whether it is ending with uh, that particular string or not the output will be in forms of boolean true boolean that is true or false false here true here boolean means only true or false so that will give you some output in that format so in python there are different types of formatting methods so let's say you want to print a text print i am a cat okay if you want to print this thing okay so there is this dot formatting method using dot formatting method what you can do is you can simply instead of you know like uh, writing something here you can add dot formatting dot formatting method dot format and in the argument you can simply enter the word or you can do some calculation whatever value you want to do do here so uh, that way what you can do is you can simply replace this you know particular empty space with that particular word or the particular solution so this will result in i am a cat okay there are also different types of formatting a formatting is uh, you can say is another method another way of formatting a text uh, whenever you are printing something so let's say uh, what you can do is you can simply define a variable name let's say name equal to cat or name equal to some let's say you are doing some calculation so you can just store that um, no result in that particular variable and then you can use that particular variable name here okay so this is also uh, another way also remember here you have to use f before the double quotes okay and uh, yeah if you want to give a single quote in the defined variable output you simply have to use this this format this exclamation mark and r okay so see formatting has so many things and uh, like we haven't covered it here most of the things like you know you can re read from this particular link click on this particular link and uh, just try to read through you know the documentation and see if you are able to understand the formatting method or not because it will take some time and with practice you will definitely understand it so most of the time what we are going to do is we are going to use either f format f formatting or either we are using dot format method okay so with practice you will understand that but try to uh, go through this particular documentation this particular you know link and uh, practice on your own okay it is not that important but it is important 
now let's see what is uh, the concept of lists okay so there is this list is a different type of you can say object in python um, and uh, it is mutable unlike uh, this string it is mutable mutable means if there is certain thing in that particular list that can be updated okay that index can be updated so this is also sequence sequence just like string that means it also has the concept of slicing and indexing so i don't need to explain the concept of slicing and indexing in the lists uh, but also we'll go through those concepts um, so just let's see how we create lists in python so in python a list is often defined in this format so we use brackets both sides and we write the number and the type of data whatever data types we are using here so here we are using uh, numbers and here we are using textual data okay so these are integers then this is string so we are assigning this particular list to a variable name a so that means in a list we can have different types of you know data types so here we have integer here we have strings both are in the same list so that means a list can have different types of you know objects so uh, you can say that way you can create a list also if you want to check the length of a particular list it will give you the length that means this particular list has length one two three four so there are four elements in this particular list if you want to check what is at the index zero the, at the index zero that that is one at index one we have two at, at two we have three at um at four we have this python okay sorry at three we have python cool in the same way we have the concept of you know slicing we have the concept of reversing that particular list elements in the list so we we here what we are doing we are reversing the elements in the string so the reversed you know list is um list is this okay sorry not the string but the list okay now uh, you can also concatenate lists so let's say you have a list a and if you want to add some other elements you can simply uh, concatenate, uh, concatenate with a different list okay now you can also perform some operations like you know if you want to like um, multiply double the element of any list you can simply use this star symbol and you can double or triple the elements in the list okay you can use any number it's not just double okay let's see what are the methods used on lists okay so list is also an object and every object in python has methods so let's see what are the methods available on list okay so see we have a method called append if you want to add something permanently to the list use this append method so let's say you want to like you know mm -hmm. add any other element so we'll we'll talk about how we can do that okay so let's say we have a list one and three list containing one and three cool if you want to add the word python to it the string python to it all you have to do is create b dot append python so that means initially we have our list containing of one two three and if we are writing this append here and we are entering our you know integer or our string here it will be added to that particular list and it only accepts one argument that means you can only add one thing at a time so you can simply add your python here and it will update that particular list so the updated list is here one three python okay if you want to eliminate the last element of the list you simply have to use this pop method it will remove the last element python will be removed here okay as you can see here python is removed you can also specify the index to be popped so let's say you want to pop the index zero so if you are popping the index zero that means you are popping one here it will remove one and the list will be left with the element three only okay so that way you can follow these methods and these methods will be useful when you are working with some problems related to the lists
so remember, remember these you know methods and uh, try to practice little so see it also has a method called uh, reverse and sort sorry sort so uh, you want to reverse the element in the list you simply have to use this you know method dot reverse and this okay this will reverse the element in the list if you want to sort list sort means it will either sort it in alphabetical manner or ascending manner so here we have list 1 3 4 2 5 6 if you are performing sort function function on this particular you know list then the, the resulting output will be this 1 2 3 4 5 6 so here you can see it is not organized but here it is in kind of organized manner so try to remember these functions because these methods or functions are important and now you can also have lists within lists so this is called nesting so let's say you have a list one one two three okay and there is another list called four five six so if you are creating a variable name matrix and in the matrix you are entering those two variables list one and list two and you know you are putting them in a, another list so the output will be something similar this is the parent list you can see and these are these are the lists inside a list okay if you want to check the element at position zero the element at position zero will be this index zero i mean will be this particular you know element and this will be the index one okay and now see here see our list is one two three four five six this is our entire list the big the list that we have this is the first element this is the second element the index of the first element is zero the index of the second element is one now let's say you want to take the first element of the first list so how you are going to do that you are simply going to enter this particular index and the index of that particular list followed by this particular index so let's say if this is our index you simply have to enter the zero and this will be followed by the index of the list within the list so this will this will take you to the index zero that means first list then after that it will take you to the index zero of the list within the list this is one so here let's say you want to check the uh, index of first element sorry uh, element at the first index and what is at the zero index of that particular you know element that is four that means zero one then we are going to the zero of that particular you know list so here the output will be four so you can say these things will confuse you when you are working with the problems but you need to like you know practice a little here because that way you will get some clarification on how to you know like how nesting works and how you can use nesting to check you know what is at the index of um, for the listing like you know in, uh, when you have complex deeper listing labels so that way you know you will be able to understand only by solving the problems not just by looking at the screen so simply like you know just solve the problems and see now let's look at a new concept called dictionaries so dictionaries are objects in python okay and dictionaries have a different concept unlike lists and uh, strings we have here key values pair that means every value of the dictionary has a key that means you can use the key of that particular dictionary to access the value so let's say we are creating a dictionary here dictionary equal to we are using this particular curly braces then we are using the key key can be name can be anything don't worry about the name and the values can be anything so let's say you want to attach the value of country's capital with the country so let's say here you have country one then the capital the country two then its capital so that way you will be able to create dictionaries dictionaries and make sure to use curly braces here and just notice here that everything here is in that uh, you, you can say this single quote okay 
except for the numbers you have to enter the values in sing single code okay uh, whatever the data type that there is but the key should always have this single code okay not the values but the keys let's let's create another dictionary so here we have dictionaries dictionary second dictionary two here we have key one and the value here is a list key two and the value here is a string key three and the value here is a number so as you can see all the keys have this single quotes okay we have curly braces at the end and at the start and then we have the list we don't have to enter curly braces here okay but in the string obviously the same structure that we follow so that way you have this list attached to this particular key this string attached to particular particular key key 2 and this number attached to that particular key key 3 this means these elements are accessible using these keys okay so if you want to access the list you have to call this key key 1 if you want to access python the string you have to call by key 2 if you want to access this particular number then you have to call key 3 so here let's say we are calling key 2 okay for the calling purpose all you have to do is use square brackets and use the key name okay either in single single bracket or um, single quote or double quote okay so if you are using key 2 this will result in that particular output whatever this element is associated with that particular key that will be you know the result here now let's say um, certain objects uh, allow indexing right so if you want to do indexing further in the list let's say a string allows indexing so p it has g zero index it is at one then t is at two in the same manner if you want to access t let's say here all you can do is first you can write the key this key value will give you the access to python so this, this particular element associated with the key to and after that you can perform your indexing here so if you want to do the indexing if you want to find what element is at the index 2 okay that way you will get the output as t so this t is coming from the this element okay this index t and this python is accessible by the key 2 so that means this key 2 is giving access to python and this 2 is then giving access to the t element in the python so that means you can use indexing on valuables of keys that allow it values of the keys that allows it okay so whatever you know uh, values that are you are using just make sure that uh, those methods are also applicable here so let's say if list has certain kind of methods that can be also you know applied on the lists element if you are accessing list with the help of certain keys okay so don't get confused i understand that i'm confusing you but still uh, like you know with practice you'll get the concept here now let's see um you know we also have certain methods like uh, upper as i explained before that if certain values allow certain a certain type of methods that can be performed on that particular element using the key okay To create an empty dictionary you simply have to use two uh, or single curly braces and uh, you can simply assign any value as well so you know the value can be assigned simply by using this particular key key element one equal to three key element two equal to three if you are calling this dictionary you can simply see the values are associated with that particular you know keys of the dictionary now just like the lists we also have the concept of nested dictionaries and next nested dictionaries will have certain problems certain you know real world challenges and once you're practicing you will face these problems that you are getting problems related to this nested dictionaries so make sure that understand this concept carefully so in nested dictionaries what we have is let's say we here we have key one right and the value of this is this whole entire value this is entire value okay then we have this inner key inner key and inner dictionary here we have and this is the inner key of that particular dictionary and this is the value this is another dictionary so as you can see the nesting there is nested there are actually three dictionaries but they are all nested one dictionary is the value of another dictionary 
and one dictionary is, has the key um, key of key of another one so it's kind of like you know dependent on each other so if you are calling key one key one will result in this entire dictionary here entire dictionary here okay and if you are calling key one nested next nested key one sub nested key two it will result in this inner element here okay so try to like work on the problems related to nested dictionaries in order to understand the concepts clearly there are certain dictionary methods as well so like if you are writing your dict dot keys you if you're using this function it will give you all the keys if you're writing values it will give you the values it will if you're writing d dot items it will give you the items of that particular dictionaries okay Now let's look at a new object type called tuples. So tuples are immutable. Okay, they are just like lists, but they are immutable. Okay, Immutab immutability is important sometimes in code. So um, at that time you can use the concept of tuples. Okay, uh, so that you don't need to modify anything, so that people cannot modify anything, uh, or like if you do not want some kind of you know modification in your uh, like code so that in that situation you can use tuples okay application of tu uh, tuples later in your you know programming career will help you understand what exactly uh, the you know application is so don't worry about that let's understand how tuples are created so tuples are created using this bracket here and you can enter the value okay let's say t t equal to this the output will be this if you can also check the length of this you can also perform indexing and slicing on tuples just like lists okay and there are also certain methods like index count etc and uh, if you want to like you know add certain value like if you want to change the value of the uh, tuples you won't be able to do that because the tuples are immutable you can't change any change any value okay now let's see the concept of sets so set is an unordered collection with no duplicate elements basic use include membership testing eliminating duplicate entries set objects also support mathematical operations like union intersection difference uh, symmetric difference set items are unordered unchangeable and do not allow duplicate values so let's understand what exactly these things mean so see sets may appear that all the elements in the sets are like you know arranged or ordered in certain manner but these elements are not ordered actually and none of the elements repeats so let's say here we are creating a set okay one two three four five four three four five okay if i'm creating the set and if i'm like you know executing this code the output here is one two three four five that means all the items that were repeated are removed okay the only thing is we are getting the unique elements here that means sets can have the unique elements okay now if you want to add one element to the set you have to use this method so let's say if you are creating an empty set here set one set uh, just you know it will create an empty set if you are adding something to it you just have to add one element here whatever element you are adding one two three four and that way the element will be added to that set okay this is another way to create the set okay you have to use this curly bracket and you have to define set here notice this is just like the dictionary but the key value pairs are missing here python will automatically understand that this is set and it will output you the set only so just try to keep these little little things in mind that there is a difference between set and dictionaries okay so let's see we are, there are different different ways to create the sets actually you know if you want to let like create a set you can simply use this you know approach as well a equal to set and uh, if you are adding this particular letters here these will be 
contained within the particular sets and this will result in a different set so let's say here abracadabra here we have another set here we are using la chasm so the output here is a b c d r so all the repeated elements are removed here okay and here the output is a c l m j so all the repeated elements are removed here that means you are getting only the unique elements that is you can say the you know most important property of the sets okay also you can perform like you know if you want to perform intersection and uh, if you want to perform certain functionalities on sets you can do that so you must have studied sets in your mathematic basic mathematical you know classes like uh, in 10th or 12th standard you must have studied sets so let's say if there is a set element a and uh, there is set a and there is set b and if you want to like you know find out let us see a but not in b so th what this will do is this operator will give you the output of the letters that are in a but those letters are not in b okay in the same way if you want to check letters in a b or both if those letters are in a or b or both then you have to use this operator if you want to check letters in both a and b then you have to use this operator this will give you that a and c are both in a and b okay if you want to check letters in a or b but not both okay so you have to use this operator and uh, you'll get this output okay so these are some operators uh, we also call it bitwise operators and uh, these operators can help you you know find uh, what are the letters that are common in one set or another set and and uh, like you know other set functionalities are there uh, also you should uh, check out the documentation for further understanding on sets and uh, if it's not clear just try to you know, reach out to us we'll help you out definitely now there is another type of you know object called booleans booleans are basically true or false one or zero okay so basically the output will be either true or either false so see uh, before we understand boolean like uh, application of boolean let's understand comparison operators so comparison operators you must be already aware of the comparison operators so we have this sign that means strictly less than this means less than or equal to strictly greater than greater than or equal to this double sign this double equal sign is equal okay this means not equal okay remember this is very important this is also very important okay and there is is and there is there is is not okay we'll we'll look into these two later so see here if i'm checking 10 is less than equal to 30 it will result in true okay if i'm checking 20 less than 10 10 less than 30 it will result in true this will result in false okay that means the results are coming in either true or false if i'm checking 2 is not equal to 4 this will result in true because this means this comparison operator means not equal to okay now see is and is not these operators are kind of you can say will tell you whether 2 is 4 or not so this is kind of you can say a question type you know a statement so whether 2 is 4 so it's obviously not so the output will be false okay 2 is not 4 this means this that means this statement is correct so the output will be true so this is the application of is and is not and you can use this um, further you know. now let's see the concept of logical operators the logical operators are used in decision making and return boolean and or not okay so these are like you know return boolean and or not are the operators here sorry so see if i'm checking this logic 5 is greater than 2 and 5 is greater than 6 so what it will do is it will check this first 5 is greater than 2 that means it is true okay and it will also check 5 is greater than 6 or not but this is false right so true and false will result in false that means this is false this is true this will result in false okay 
here 5 is greater than 2 or 5 is greater than 6 so if either of these two are correct either of these two um, two are true then the output will be true okay in and case both of them should be true okay now we have not operator not operator is you know kind of like give you the opposite output so let's say 5 is greater than 2 or 5 is greater than 6 okay so here we were getting true right but when you are using not the output will be false that means whatever the output would be it will just convert it to the opposite so uh, we also have the concept of membership operators so membership operator actually checks whether something is in that particular sequence or not sequences are like strings or lists so let's say if you want if you have a list one two three and you want to check whether that particular element is in list or not so you can simply check three in list one so if it is in the list it will give you the output as true and if you want to check whether five is not in the list one it will also tell you the answer so here five is not here in the list so the output is true okay so these are a few operators boolean operators and uh, some application on the boolean boolean operators try to practice certain problems on this you know particular concept and uh, you will get better understanding